Hi, my name is Brandon Ricardo. I'm a marketing major here at Mizzou, and after graduation, I look forward to working at uh, my new job with X Advisors. I'm Corey Brubaker. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm currently a junior here at the University of Missouri, and I'm currently majoring in business with an emphasis in finance. I currently have an internship at Northwestern Mutual, and I intend to stay there and be a financial planner. My name is Michael Cohen. I'm a senior here at Mizzou. I'm a finance and real estate double major. I'm exactly in the same place as Corey, a different high school, St. Louis, and I plan to stay at Veterans United after I graduate. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Elliot Tenard. I'm a finance. I'm studying finance and real estate here at the University of Junior on this campus. Originally from a south suburb of Chicago called Flossmoor, but currently is basically my second home now. After graduation, I plan on going into a real estate firm growing my roots there and seeing where it takes me. All right, let's get started with this project today. Our project is focused on workforce development, okay? Specifically in Benton County, the city of Warsaw, Missouri. Cool. Let's start off with what is workforce development, okay? Um, a generic definition, an American approach to economic development that attempts to enhance the region's economic stability and prosperity by focusing on the people rather than the businesses in the community. Our consensus of that definition is like, hey, Let's look at the people inside this community, not all the buildings, and see how these people that live here in this community every single day can uplift it and bring it back to its original prosperity, all right? Using the resources that are already on site. Next slide. So basically, taking this, a ghost town. No one's outside, no industry, no shopping, and taking it and making it look like something like this, all right? A market, a place where people flourish, that you want to go to, see your friends, family, community, happiness, selling things, buying things, building that economic standing to make it a great city to live in. So yeah, so here's just some rough background um, information about Benton County and Warsaw. So Benton County has a population of 19,358 people. Uh, they, uh, they have a population of 4,991 workers. Um, the total number of employers in Benton County is 741. And uh, a little more in depth, in Warsaw. So Warsaw has three uh, uh, three top, uh, three major uh, industries uh, that are located there. One being retail, which employ 178 people, um, combinations and food services, um, they employ 169 people, and manufacturing, which employ 93 people. So as you can see from this uh, map, this is pretty much just illustrating the economic and industrial uh, employment percentages uh, in Warsaw. So as you can see, we have, um, like I said, retail trade, accommodations, food services, and manufacturing is the top three. Um, two other big ones are also educational services and healthcare and social services. So like, um, yeah, so stuff like that. Um, well, what we found really interesting about uh, Warsaw in specific is that most of their most of their um, uh, employee pool uh, have to commute to Warsaw to get to work, and that commute time is about anywhere from around 15 to 18 minutes, which we thought was kind of interesting. We figured that most of the people lived in Warsaw and worked there as well, but uh, we were wrong. Next slide, please. Um, one meeting with our site visitor Lynette Stokes, who was amazing, by the way. Um, she pretty much gave us two overarching goals that she wanted us to uh, research and get more information pretty much about uh, throughout the semester. One being uh, researching how Warsaw in specific can improve the workforce. Very basic general goal that uh, pretty much was our overarching theme throughout our whole project. And then second was connecting qualified workers with employees that are looking to hire. Um, our, this second task was uh, the bulk of our project this semester. We were, um, we researched and uh, built a survey and did all this stuff so that we could um, get a better understanding of what employers are expecting of their uh, potential employees so that we can give it to the qualified workers in Warsaw and they can have a better understanding of what uh, guidelines um, certain businesses expect when going into uh, an interview. Um, so yeah, so this semester, Lynette, Lynette gave us uh, a bunch of subtests that she wanted us to complete. 
uh, in specific and pretty much we would just connect with her every time we had a uh, Zoom out with call which, and uh, just tell her what we found. So the first text was we had to make a list of businesses that were in Benton, Benton County and who were in the process of hiring. So here we just looked um, at like uh, Missouri Job Center, um, Indeed, Monster, Glassworks, all kinds of uh, uh, hiring websites and online services uh, to look for uh, jobs in Warsaw and see what companies around um, Benton County were hiring. Then we had to refine that research and pretty much compile a list of where the most hiring uh, opportunities were located and where uh, and where the bulk of the uh, where like just where the bulk of the hiring and job opportunities were. Um, and what we found we found that was obviously in Warsaw, the biggest uh, city in Benton County. Um, Lincoln was a close second, and then Cole Camp was third. Those are the three main, uh, I guess you could say, cities in Benton County. Uh, Next, once we defined the list, we, uh, Lynette wanted us to split it up into industry and find the top three uh, employers in each industry. So we had eight industries ranging from retail to all the way to like manufacturing, stuff like that, uh, with three employers, the three of the top employers through all of it. Um, once we uh, had that list compiled for her, she wanted us to start working and researching our work Force development survey. And that was our biggest task and what we thought was the best idea we can go when going uh, we could use when going into interviews with these managers from these local businesses. So what we did was we would go online, search um, like how to make a good workforce development survey, like what makes it, what type of questions we should ask. And once we did all that research, we started to brainstorm potential questions, stuff like that, and then we ended up creating our survey, which we will talk about in a little bit. Um, finally, once our survey was created and approved by Lynette, we had our site visit, which was uh, the 6th of November. We drove down to Warsaw where we interviewed three managers, um, and that as well we will talk about later in this presentation. Uh, so when we got to our site visit, other than the uh, three main interviews, um, Lynette pretty much took us on a historic journey through uh, Warsaw, where they, where they came from, how they began, and stuff like this. Uh, we went to the Harriet Truman Museum uh, that looks over Truman Lake in Warsaw, and we learned about how Warsaw became, uh, became a town, um, what was their economic boom in the late 60s, which was like steamboats, stuff like that. Um, mainly based on the water. And after that, um, we went around the uh, area around this museum and saw these rustic log cabins, and we found out that every year, Warsaw has um, this festival called Heritage Days, where people from the surround, like Benton County and surrounding counties um, come in and they pretty much get to see what it's like to live uh, to, and be a pioneer from the 16th to the 19th century which was honestly pretty fascinating. We went into these log cabins, and they're much more than you think, um, which was kind of funny. Uh, after that, we took a stroll through the rest of the museum. We saw uh, Warsaw monuments like the Truman Dam and the Swinging Gate Bridge, um, stuff like that. So with that, um, Lynette really, really gave us a lay of the land, what it was like uh, to live in Warsaw, and pretty much what they thought well, like Warsaw community leaders thought as their high points of their town. Yeah, this was definitely the most interesting part of this project for myself. Coming from the Chicagoland area, I had never heard of Warsaw, Missouri. So doing a project about a city you've never been to, very difficult. Going in there, experiencing, actually walking through the city, seeing their downtown area, their different heritage areas, the actual lake itself was super cool, super awesome. All right, and then, so when we were all together, we were brainstorming about what we should do from this project, and we concluded that the best way to accomplish the task that we were given was to create this survey. Here's some screenshots for you guys. Obviously, we start with the company name and what industry they're in. We know the size of the company, which is a very important part because everyone wants, 
to work for a reputable company. Uh, if they're hiring right now, very important if you're active in your job search, something important you should know. Education, so education is a huge part. You can't be uh, applying for jobs and ex uh, expecting to succeed if you're not qualified educationally. It'll be in over your head and it'll be very stressful. And then challenges, we give a short answer, a short answer text. Um, so this is just a little insight from the employer, a specific employer about like things they look for in an employee, just little help helpful hints for you going into your interview and your interviewing process. And then offering on-the-job on training and things like that. So. Next, a huge one when considering where you want to be in your career, what benefits that the company offers. We list the main benefits that most companies do offer. We also have another box in case your company has something specific uh, to their company that they want to tell potential employees. Um, this is where we found out about the commute to work. About people around 15 minutes, um, if they carpool, live in Bend County, things like that. And then this, I think, will be the most helpful to a potential employee during the interview process. Long answer texts from employers describing their uh, ideal employee, challenges retaining qualified employees, just any helpful hint to give to an interviewer or a potential employee. You'll have one step ahead of your competition for that whole thing. So yeah, the goal of this interview is to really find out what um, employers are looking at employees and what Warsaw as a city could do to help employers find those qual find that qualified employee or the next manager that they need to make their business even more successful. And, and so it's a win-win because as an employer, you get a more competitive group of potential employees and as an employee, you get helpful hands so you can excel in your interview. interview. It's also very important to know that this is actually a Google Doc. It's not a paper survey, so sending it to as many and as many different employers as you want to is very easy. By the push of a button, you send them the, you send them the actual survey, send it back to us. All of our information is in one data chart on our laptops. We can do with it what we want at that point. Super great was actually on Google Doc this time. And with all that being said, we can only focus on so many because of the time crunch that we have. I think Manette has photocopies of all of these too, so you gotta be able to look at all of those. We interviewed three separate places of three different industries. We had the pleasure of talking to Walmart, Burger King, and the Lincoln Community Nursing Home. First one, Walmart. If you've ever lived anywhere, you've probably heard of these people. <laughs> the ideal employee for them, we actually had the pleasure of talking to the store manager, so we got some great insight on the different things that they were looking for. Someone who's very young and they're looking to stay there long term. And on top of that, they actually have the college benefit program for you. It's a dollar a day to help you get your degree. It's a great program to look up. Definitely look into that. And the next one is availability. A lot of the times people work nine to five jobs, right? If you're gonna be working nine to five at Walmart, the most busy times that they have are outside of that nine to five time frame. And since nobody wants to work past five, the time that they're the busiest when people get off work, there's not enough people. I don't know if you've ever been in line at Walmart and they have about 50 of those things open, the cash registers, and one of them are actually open. That's a huge problem that they have. Benefits for them is family care. They basically, if you go anywhere, they're gonna have the one similar vision, dental, 401k, all of those great things. Hiring resources, it's Walmart. They pretty much have a dominant presence anywhere. Indeed.com, job fairs, if you've ever gone to any job fair, they are very heavily involved in all of those. They probably even do sponsorship a little bit. They do a lot of on-the-job training, taking back to this long-term young people. They want to do those, they're focusing a lot more on college students to kind of help, which is down here, the retaining of their young employees because that turnover ratio is insane. The requirement for them is just be willing to work, be willing to show up on time, be reliable, and naturally be flexible, but obviously they're willing to work with that too, they're also very flexible. And then this next company is Manufacturing Burger King. It is not Burger King, we all thought that too, but it is just as good. Their IT employee is just somebody who applies. Um, they have a really big problem. They actually were out in the West Coast and they didn't have a great problem with that, but they wanted to move to Warsaw. And they did have a reason for that. You guys remember what that was? So the reason for moving from the West Coast to Warsaw is operation cost. As you all, as you all know, living in California is very expensive, right? Operating, operating a factory in California will also be super expensive. Way less expensive to move your business to Warsaw, Missouri, where the operation and living costs are significantly cheaper. That was their thought when coming to Warsaw, Missouri initially. 
So that's something that Warshaw should definitely make a point of, right? Move your company here where our operation and living costs for your employees will be 10 times cheaper than anywhere else. Thank you, Elliot. I'm going to take a quick back step. For those of you who don't know what Burger King does, Burger King is a place that deburs things, and when we showed up, we did not know what that was, and they had a great example for us. Think of a ballpoint pen. When you touch it, it's very smooth. It slides right through the paper. It doesn't start out like that. What they do is they have someone come in, and if it's too sharp, what they'll do is they'll basically grind it down to a smooth and a smoothened part, and which is nice and easy. Everything goes smoothly. Another good example that they used was and an edge, if it's too sharp and kids are coming through and they're cutting themselves, they can deeper it a little bit more and it makes it a lot easier for kids to come past. It might just be a little bit of a graze. It might be a little bit of a white mark if you ever had a little slight slide mark right there. It's not a cut, but it's just a little bit something. They're hiring resources. They try to do newspapers. It's a really big word of mouth. There's not very many hiring resources that they can use because no one knows what they are or heard of them. But I will tell you, they're very family oriented with benefits as well. If you, if you basically are working there, you're insured, your parents are insured, your family's insured. That's what's great about them is they just, they love the family. They're very oriented on that. They're willing to work with you. And for on the job training, what they have is, they'll teach you. If they do kind of for the requirements as well, they want you to have a little bit of the, what is it, the tech school. It's not necessary, but it's fantastic if you have it. A high school degree is also something that they really look for. They will be willing to train you as well, as you know that they are trying to get some more people involved. But overall, it's a great place to go to, and if you want to, it will be a great place to go. The last one is the Lincoln Community Care Center. We had a pleasure of speaking with, was it the owner? Mm -hmm. We had a pleasure of speaking with the owner, and she was fantastic. We had a good talk with her, we got a lot of insight about the ideal employees, and this definitely goes along with the challenges for finding and retaining employees. And it's someone finding a passion for the elderly because a lot of people they think they want to do it and they'll come and then it's just like with Walmart the turnover ratio is a little bit higher they realize this isn't what they want to do in the long term because it just takes a very great person to do this and moving on from that is the benefits this has essentially the same benefits as all the other ones you know the vision the dental the only thing that is different is the 401k they don't do that because this is government owned and it's kind of a and it sounds scary and it's not it's actually a really great thing it's a non-distribution retirement fund, and it sounds maybe a little bit wrong, and I don't know all the facts on that, but it's just as good as a 401k. The hiring resources that they use, Indeed.com, job fairs, and she did say one of the biggest issues isn't hiring resources, because you can go on Indeed.com, and I guarantee you'll find one on there. It'll get filled up within the next few days. It's more of the retaining employees. You have to really want to work with them. You have to be willing to do things that a lot of people would be willing to do, but overall, it's a great place to go. The requirements for them, and on the job training actually too, they do hire right out of high school, so that's one of the smaller requirements, and that kind of goes along with on the job training because they will train you, but it is a great thing to have if you have a nursing degree, even just an associate's or a bachelor's, either one, they love all of it. All right, and then uh, there's some limitations that we faced during our project, and two of the biggest ones being managing our crew member schedule. So there's four of us, all our full-time students here at the zoo, we're not obviously gonna have the same schedule, so it's hard to find time to meet and work together. But we have a group chat and we managed it. And then being two hours away from Warsaw also, it's hard to know really like the little things that are going on within the community. Um, and then the next, finding a site, uh, they visit that worked for all of us, as well as working for Lynette. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to go to the site visit because of this, because I had a quiz when I worked for Lynette and the other three, so. Uh, yeah, and then challenges faced. So obtaining credible information about Warsaw. Um, we used a couple different websites and we all researched for a couple hours and eventually we were able to find some credible resource and uh, some useful resource as well. And then because I was, I was unable to attend, they did talk to a small pool of employers, which is a challenge, you guys could touch on that. Yeah, so mainly um, with the small pool of employers, we created a list, as I said earlier, that um, listed the top three employers in several different industries. I think it was around eight. So we had around uh, 24 employee, uh, employers and businesses that we were hoping to talk to, and granted 24 is a lot. Um, but when we did our site visit, as we said earlier, we only talked to three. Um, we probably, when coming up with our solutions, would have um, made it a lot easier if we were able to talk to uh, around six to eight uh, total employers. So you can get a better um, base knowledge of what each employer is really wanting from their employee and 
what they expect um, from them in the future. So yeah. And then uh, these next two kind of go together. Uh, Warsaw is primarily an older population, so getting these older members of the community excited about workforce development is a big challenge for us. Yeah, I mean, um, with this uh, population, the mean age is around like 40 to 45 years old. So uh, most of these people aren't really looking for, they're looking forward more to retirement than they are their next job, which is a really big challenge when um, trying to develop like uh, your workforce. Um, with that being said, uh, if we had a bit of a younger crowd and um, as this last one, like exactly um, these two go hand in hand, as Corey said earlier, like um, trying to get the older generation to uh, learn the, uh, these new technologies that are coming out uh, every year is going to take a lot more time than I think Warsaw has um, to offer and um, it's going to just be more difficult and you're going to have to have people who are trained be more patient and so that, that just brings on a whole slew of challenges that um, one can face when trying to develop workforce in Warsaw. All right, solutions. So this is just a quick breakdown of our solutions. We go into super detail in our, um, in our paper, our research paper that I actually wrote for this, but just a quick, a quick rundown of what we got. First thing, most importantly, is jobs. Workforce development revolves around jobs, okay? Bringing jobs into the community so they can uplift the economic value of that community. Next, let's decrease the number of citizens that are actually commuting outside of Warsaw. I heard earlier today that it's an average of a 16 minute to 15, 17 minute commute from the residents of Warsaw to them going to their actual job. Let's make that commute zero because their job should be inside of Warsaw themselves, right? That's how the tax revenue gets back to the government system so they can uplift the community and beautify and things along those lines. And things along those lines. Next, increase, increase the number of job opportunities in Warsaw to attract new residents, right? Who's gonna move to a community where there's no job for them to have an income for their family, okay? That's what we wanna do here in Warsaw. Bring new jobs into the community so we'll have new members coming into the community to uplift the population, uplift the number of happy residents. After that, something pretty interesting we're doing is creating a workforce development community, okay? Us right here in our project, this is our semester project. We won't be able to be involved as much as we want after the semester, but Warsaw, they need to continue uplifting their community. And by this, take the leaders of the community and put them into this committee, all right? So they're focused on always keeping the workforce development level at a certain height in their plan. After that, workshops hosted by State Fair Community College. The reason I bring up State Fair Community College is because literally it's 30 minutes down the road, right? It's an area in, in the near location that's basically filled with young prospective employees for the community of Warsaw, right? Students doing technical degrees, right? Finance degrees, degrees that are perfect for community. After they graduate, they're gonna need somewhere to live. Warsaw going to State Fair Community College and putting in what they have to offer for grade three students. Also, on that point, you know, with these workshops with the State Fair Community College, we, um, we were talking about Lynette about um, inviting even the professors to come to Warsaw so that they could teach uh, community members about new technologies and stuff like this so they could build workshops and overall um, develop a stronger base of knowledge in their candidate pool in Warsaw. So that'll give them an easier chance and a better chance to obtain qualified workers and um, hopefully in the end have an abundancy of qualified workers that are willing to work and want to work. Solution two, quick rundown, tourism, right? Warsaw, as we talked about earlier, a beautiful place in the middle of Missouri, right? Lake Truman, amazing. Up there is a picture you can see. Built upon that, right, your natural attractions. Natural attractions are great for communities. Why? Because you don't have to put any money into building. They're already there. Build things around them to invite people to come and look, and look at the wonderful fortune that your community already has to offer. After that, outdoor hiking and biking areas. Abundance of wilderness trails we saw when we took our site visit. I would love to walk through. A lot of people would love to walk through. The big part about that is they just need to know that these trails are there and available for people to go through. Next, fishing, Lake Truman fishing, a um, cool activity that a lot of people like doing. 
Lake Truman Lake there on the city um, of Warsaw, connected to the Lake of the Ozarks, so really easy, really easy to transit around. Something that people may not know about. If you have one part of the Ozarks, you can literally take your boat down to Lake Truman and enjoy your fishing there. Historical fun. At the bottom, the museum we visited. It was great. It wasn't the classic museum of going through the initial history of Warsaw. It went back farther than that, like to the prehistoric times. So we had boxes that you can look at, different pictures of dinosaurs and mammoths that used, that used to roam through the community before we were even thought of. Super cool. Make a big point of that. Lastly, Airbnb, okay? I know this is something broad to talk about, but residents there that have maybe more than one property, put your extra property online so people like myself can go to Warsaw, Missouri, and have a place to stay, and use all the cool recreational activities that are there, right? College students are always looking to travel and explore and things like that. If you have a place for them to stay, they'll definitely come. Not only should, ooh, can you go back, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, not only should you guys be marketing um, your tourism points, you can also use tourism as a way to inform citizens around, uh, around Warsaw and in Bend County about the job opportunities that you have there. So after you guys have brought in new jobs, stuff like that, you're gonna need um, people to film. So uh, I know that, as I said earlier, um, uh, Warsaw has their Pioneer Heritage Days, which um, takes place, I wanna say, in the middle of June. Um, and with that, they, had, they draw on a crowd of 10,000 people. So you can talk to 10,000 people about what's going on in Warsaw uh, job-wise so that maybe they'll have more of an incentive to not only move there, but, but not only work there, but even move, like possibly move their family there. All right, as we look to the future, what does Warsaw, Missouri look like 10 years down the road, okay? This is what we want to be, this is what we want to be in the community way after we're done with this project, all right? We want them to get connected to State Fair Community College. It's such a huge and great resource for them. They're looking to uplift their community with new workforces. That's all State Fair Community College supplies, right? New students, new employees, looking to get into the workforce, get their roots settled somewhere. So stay partnered with them. After that, consistent job fairs. You can't just have one big job fair and expect it to supply your community forever. It has to be a yearly thing, maybe even a quarterly thing, right? Get that set up to where if anyone ever needs a job, they don't have to go looking for it. They'll know that their, their community job fair is happening next month, and there'll be hundreds of employers there looking to hire them. After that, marketing strengths. Do you want to talk about marketing strengths? Yeah, so pretty much is what we want Warsaw to really do, and to pretty much hit home. I know there's another group um, presentation about just marketing uh, Warsaw, but um, they should really just be focusing on what makes them a successful town. Like what bring, brings in the money? So I know we, when we talked to Lynette, like the biggest attraction is the lake. So maybe have um, a recent, like a commercial or something that shows them that you have this beautiful lake here that is not being used to its potential and pretty much just waiting for people to come and use it. So uh, when marketing the strengths of Warsaw, um, you'll be able to pretty much entice more people to move there and um, even have jobs come there as well. Yeah, taking the time. Usually marketing goes on the internet, television, but maybe it's something as simple as a billboard on I-70 going through Missouri, right? You see this wonderful picture of this wonderful lake. If you take time to stop in this community, see their wonderful historical downtown area, right? The different hiking trails, the museum. Once you see that, you fall in love with the community, decide to build your beach home there that you and your family decide to go to every single summer, right? Every single summer you and your family there, you're uplifting the community of Warsaw, right? Putting more money into their financial revenue system. Things simple as that, you never know what it's going to take off to. Thanks, guys. Thank you.